All right, I've been uh, busy for the last couple of days. I'm not going to be able to get down to my studio today either. But I thought I'd uh, show you my first video ever on uh, YouTube. It was back in June 4th, I think it was, of uh, 2008. And then I took a tour of Ennis and the Valley in the second video that I'm going to show you. And that was about... Uh, 10 days later. Those are the first two videos I ever made. I used to edit my videos online. Uh, I can't remember the name of the uh, program, but I'm going to put these two videos together for you so you can see what my first two videos were like. And uh, interesting. The first video is actually was shot by a gentleman uh, who uh, wanted to film me at the gallery there in, in Tahoe City, California, at the James Harold Gallery. I was making an appearance there. And uh, Mr. Willis uh, uh, set up a camera and videoed me while I'm, I was working on a couple of plays and uh, asked me questions about myself and, and I answered him. And so that's the first video. I didn't actually shoot that video, but that's the first video I ever put up on this. Uh, channel. All right, let's uh, enjoy seeing me. Five, eight, that's 12, 13 years ago. Wow. Anyway, let's proceed to. All I do is push the shadows around until they look right, you know, familiar, or, or at least halfway to I mean, that's all a sculpture is, is a collection of shadows. As I sculpt the clay, I, I uh, try to picture in my mind how it'll look in bronze, because bronze, uh, thing that makes bronze interesting are different planes and different uh, textures and I'm also picturing in my mind what the colors will be like there will be kind of an ochre red in the up from the bead border here up to this bead border piece is called Elk Woman and the only reason I gave her that name is because of all the elk teeth on her dress and on the belt and uh, but it's, it's a style of clothing that they wore back in the 1830s uh, you'll see stuff like this in a, a paintings by Catlin and and uh, although Catlin was not a, a archaeologist or a, a uh, anthropologist he still recorded what he saw somewhat and uh, so you can't take everything he did as gospel you still have to do your research into what they would have worn 1977 I finished my first play and I took it to a mold uh, foundry to see if uh, you know, they could take and make a plaster cast of it. And he said, why do you want to make a plaster cast? And I said, well, because I, what else would you make it out of? And he said, why not bronze? And I said, well, that's Rodin or Michelangelo, that's not me. And he says, why not? And he traded me, he bought the rights to it for six bronzes for me. And then, and then he asked me, what do you, how do you want to sign it? And that's when I started panicking because my last name was Lemon. And I thought, do I really want to put a lemon on my pieces? <laughs>
Just going to take you on a little tour of my town, Ennis, Montana. I'm going to tell you a little history about Ennis. Uh, it was founded in the 1860s by a gentleman who started out by bringing supplies out from the east to the uh, miners over in Virginia City, which is about 14 miles to the west of here. I'm looking east right now, going out of town. I'm going to show you where Ennis actually started. What you're seeing there is the uh, Madison Range. That's the uh, mountains to the east part of the valley. Ennis, Montana and the Madison Valley is mostly farmland or ranch land. It's uh, where they raise cattle and horses. We don't actually raise crops here except for hay and barley. This is coming into Jeffers. Now Jeffers was established as the first settlement in this valley and uh, they wouldn't allow bars in Jeffers. So to uh, get by that uh, ruling, they built bars where Ennis is now. <laughs> and so that's how Ennis got started. Now you can see Jeffers is just a few homes, are a few homes, I should say, and not much else because it never took off. And one reason is because they didn't allow bars. It's a pleasant little place though. And it's about uh, three or four miles from Ennis. There's an old house that's being restored. Those hills uh, there are on the western part of the valley. Those are called the Gravelies, and it's one of the last refuges of the last herd of uh, wild horses uh, in this part of the country. Indian tribes used to come to uh, the Madison Valley in the summer and the spring, and, uh, and they'd hunt. This was massively uh, populated by wildlife and game at that time. Uh, let me take you down to the river, the Madison River. A lot of fishermen come down this way and uh, launch their boats. Uh, fishing is one of the prime businesses of uh, Ennis, Montana, along the Madison River. Well, this is the Madison River. It's running a bit high right now because of all the runoff. Usually it's down a lot lower than this. That's the Madison Range. I'm looking sort of southeast right now. This river runs uh, out of Yellowstone Park. As I said before, uh, in the early 1800s, a lot of fur trapping in this area. Uh, mountain men got into a couple of scuffles with the Indians here, uh, Jim Bridger and his mountain men. There's a book out called uh, Journal of a Trapper, and it's an actual journal kept by a gentleman by the name of Osborne Russell who uh, trapped here in this, around this area in the 1830s and 40s. Okay, here we are coming into Ennis uh, from the east. Uh, just getting ready to cross the Madison River that we just took a look at. And this is a friend of mine's uh, business here. It's called the Rusty Cowboy. You can actually find it on the web by just putting in Rusty Cowboy in Google. And this is my town, Ennis, Montana. If you speed through, you'd miss it in an eye blink. <laughs> this is my town. Well, I hope you enjoyed the tour of Ennis, Montana. Well, I'm driving down my street now. Uh, won't show you where I live because I, it's not a really great looking house. But uh, I hope you enjoyed this little tour on Father's Day, June 14th, 2008.
beautiful sunny day today.